Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Let's start about this uh, explanation related to last film test series. Okay, there are around 150 bits are there. It will take some lot of time, I think. Okay, you should have covered. I think uh, you might have covered the books like uh, Lakshmi Khan, some PM Bakshi, like this. Okay, various books. Okay, some bits. These kinds of the, if you look at this MCQs. Okay, there are variations are there. Some are light questions, medium level question, highly depth questions are there, highly intensive questions. There are three kinds of questions are there here in, in terms of intensity. That is also, that is very important as far as this kind of high level competitive examinations are concerned. For example, in UPSC, if you look at the UPSC examination, the questions are always three types in terms of intensity. The gravity of intensity. Here also we covered like this. Okay, just uh, we will go in, in depth as well. Just look at the first one. Consider the while uh, explaining, while explaining, I will tell you certain techniques as well. So please focus on them also. Consider the following statements. Number one, consider the following statements. There are two statements. Okay, consider the following statement. Which of the above statement is oblique or correct? Immediately you should cover the whole question wherever that is there. Hmm. Number one statement. The council of ministers strength at the center and the state's level shall not exceed 15% of the Lok Sabha or assemblies. Assemblies total strength including prime minister or chief minister as the case may be. The, that, was the, that, that is the first sentence. Second one. The first coalition government in India was formed in 1969. Uh, look at the first sentence. Which of the following statement is oblique or correct? We should identify the correct one. The first statement is absolutely correct. Because the ministry's strength should be council of ministers' strength, whether it is a central level or at the national level, should be 15% which include chief minister if it is a central state level, prime minister if it is at the national level. It is as per the which Constitution Amendment Act? 91. Huh? 91. 1991. What is that one? 91. 91 Constitutional Amendment Act 2003. When the government of India, the parliament has enacted this one. 91st Constitutional Amendment Act 2003. As per this, the ministry strength should be 15%. 15% of, out of the total strength of that house, for example, in Lok Sabha, 545. Out of 545, the ministry strength, the council of ministry strength should not cross the 15%. If it is assembly, based There are two criteria. Whether it is, a, one is 15%, should not cross 15% out of the total strength of the house. Number one. Number two criteria is, it should not be less than 12. It should not be less than 12. Why this criteria? For example, if you look at the Goa, some states like Sikkim, Nagaland, some small states are there, na, where the strength is already low, the total members, uh, total strength of the house, where it should not be less than 12 for the smaller states, remember, which include Chief Minister and Prime Minister. Uh, next statement, the first coalition government in India was formed in 1969, yes, the first coalition government was formed in 1969. When the, the Congress was split into two parties, then Prime Minister Indira, that, that was party was party's name was in the Congress I. Remember, this Congress I government led by Indira Gandhi was supported indirectly by DMK, then DMK. Of course, we have, still we have DMK, DMK from Tamil Nadu, CPI, CPI ML, uh, CPI. Uh, other parties, all CPI groups, some other parties also supported Indira. That was the first coalition government in India. Forget about the states. Okay? Not in 70, 1977-79 there is a hundred that time. Actually, we are calculated that was the first coalition, but that's not the truth. This was the first co coalition government in 1969. Okay? Remember. So, which means both uh, statements are hmm, 
correct c answer is c this 91st constitutional amendment act amended 16411 a article 16411 next one second constitutionally a candidate can contest from how many consciences what was the, what is the answer huh? Two until 1990, 1996, it was unlimited. Okay, after 1996, a candidate can contest from the two seats only, whether it is at the assembly level or the MP, Lok Sabha for, for Lok Sabha as well. Only from two only since 1996. As per which article, which which act did this one? There is a Representative People's Act, RPR, Representatives People Act, RPA 1951. Representative, Representative People's Act 1951 is there. As per this one, a candidate can contest from two consciences only. Under RPA Act 1951, Section 37, 33, 7, Section 33, 7 of RPA Act 1951. Okay, that, that, that was the important. So, answer is B. Next, out of this one, this is very important because there, are, there has been a lot of discussion related to this RPA. How many, why should contest from the two seats? But in the RPA 1951 itself, there is another section is called, the section number is section 70. This section 70 bars the candidate, okay? Bars the candidate should, this candidate should represent from the only one conscience in the house. For example, Modi. Okay, he was uh, contested from the one seat from the Gujarat, one seat from Varanasi. Okay, he, he, he won from the two seats. Finally, he hold the Varanasi. Remaining, he resigned from that seat. What happened? Again, by election was conducted. That the wastage of money. So now the Election Commission has been incessantly requesting the law ministry to make a law to amend this section 37, 337 of RPA. So that one, one consciency for the one candidate. That is very important for the nation itself. To save the money and to avoid so many things and to avoid by elections also. And another thing is, there is a one concept is generally election. One nation, one, one nation. One election. If we want to implement this one nation, one election, we have to remove it, this one. Otherwise, by elections. In that point of view, also, this is very important. Okay? Under section 70 of RPA 1951, what is it? It is barring the a candidate should represent not more than one constituency in house. That's why the same act is allowing the candidate contest from the two seats. But the same act, 1951 RPA, is barring that candidate representing to no, not in two seats. Only one seat he has to represent from only one in the house. So he has to resign. So there is a contrasting in the, within the law, same law. So a lot of discussion has been happening on this issue now. Next, third. Which of the following statements is oblique or correct? regarding the disqualification of Mr. Rahul Gandhi from the Lok Sabha membership. Hmm. The first one is Article 102E of the Constitution of India. This is correct. This is under Article, this Article 102E inserted into the Indian Constitution by 52nd Constitution Amendment Act. 52nd Constitution Amend Amendment Act 1980. Next one, Section 3, Section 83 of RPA, again 1951, Representation of People's Act 1951. That is also, the, what it is saying is, if any candidate, okay, for example, I will tell you, remind me, these two are correct. Third one is, he cannot participate in election for the eight years if he was imprisoned for two years. If his imprisonment was confirmed, even by the higher court, now he is appealing to the higher court. If they, they, they also confirmed his, if he imprisoned, if he convicted, if he enjoyed, uh, com completed two years imprisonment, finally he has to be barred for the eight years from the all elections. 
which means two years imprisonment period plus another six years according to this RP. So eight years he cannot participate in the elections. So that is it. So three correct. Answer is D. Answer is D. Article 102, this one and section 83. What they are saying is this one. A candidate, if he imprisoned not less than two years, he immediately should be disqualified from the house. That was happened. According to law, that is absolutely true. What happened regarding the Rahul Gandhi disqualification? According to law. But forget about remaining all these things. Okay, now he cannot participate if he, this conviction was confirmed by even higher courts, higher judiciary, and if he completed this two years period, he cannot participate in the election for eight years. That is what is important. Mm, next one. Fourth. Which of the following is or oblique or correct reasons behind the firing up of five crore cases before the Indian courts? Uh, look at these answers. Lack of uniform civil code. Answer is D. This fourth bit answer is D, which means all are correct. Hmm. Now look at one by one. Lack of uniform civil code. What is the relation between the uniform civil code and the filing of five crore cases before the Indian courts? Uniform civil code. Uniform civil code. Lack of uniform civil code means complex complexity as far as Indian laws are concerned, complexity, which means if a woman went to the any court, immediately the court should ask to which religion you are belonging. That is the main question because there are various laws for the various religions. If you have uniform civil court, we don't have. We will have only single law. So complexity will be lessened, mitigated. So it is very easy to solve the cases. The lack of uniform civil court leads to this is the one major reason behind the piling up of the cases. Next one. Lack of efficient police system. Yes, the same police force is being used for the investigative purpose and law and order system. So they are unable to file the short sheeted within the time period. So that's why pending of the cases there. So that, that's why police reforms are needed for the to reduce the cases. It is, it is not the fault of the judiciary. There are so many other faults also. Next one. Inefficient judicial, inefficient judicial education system. Yes, our lives are not so good to meet the demands of the present era. Where is globalization? Yes, there is a huge demand for the law. A huge cases are there. But the education system is not a, unable to fulfill the needs of the advocacy or jury, jury activities, etc. Next, inadequate number of courts. That's true, no? Is the direct one. Next. Problems in proper implementation of the judicial system in India. Yes, there is still there is a lot of corruption. Judicial system, as far as judicial system at the law level also, there are so many problems. Okay? So all are correct. That's why piling up of 5 crore cases just one month back, this 5 crore mark, 5 crore means 50 million, na? 50 million cases breached, the, the mark breached, 5 crore mark. So it is not all well for the Indian democracy. It is not good for the Indian democracy. There is a lot of repercussion on this Indian society, democracy, etc. etc. So it is not good. Now Indian government now is under is being pressurized to take measures. Next. Which of the following countries first introduced RTI in the world? Simple question, that is the Sweda. So you, you might not you might not have know this one. However, you can because Canada, USA, UK, this Scandinavian countries are always in forefront na, regarding these kind of information things. So Sweden. Next sixth. Sometimes you 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 don't know. Out of the four options, you can't identify. But use the common sense. Just to look at the common sense. So automatically you can get the answer because no need to mark na, no problem. Next, uh, in view of the concept, sixth bit, in view of the concept of the good governance, which of the following acts, okay, miserably failed in India? What do you mean by good governance? Good governance is nothing but just simply implementation of that law. Whatever that law, simply implementation of the law. So we have the laws, but no implementation mechanism. 
So in that point of view, which of the following acts are miserably failed? Dowry Prohibition Act 1961, it was miserably failed. Okay, it is the saga of the failure of the laws in India, this Dowry Prohibition Act. Next, 73rd and 74th Constitution Amendment Acts 1992, yes, these were also one of the historic Constitution Amendment Acts in order to implement the local self-governments. But what about the on, the on the field? No implementation, because states are not devaluing, not providing powers to this panchayat. That's why no implementation of 73rd, 74th. So no good go ahead. Next, anti-defection law, 1980, 1980, 1985. Now what is the answer? The answer is only one and two, which means only C, not anti-defection law. Anti-defection law, it has been implemented properly. No doubt, at assembly, at the national level, this anti-defection law was properly implemented. No doubt. But the problem with the anti-defection law, the law itself is wrong. Whatever the law we have, that has been implemented. But there is a lot of criticism now. So that the, for example, speaker is the final authority. Of course, later it comes under the judicial review. But it is the anti-defection law could not cover the all various loopholes regarding this, this judicial, this defections. But law itself is wrong. So whatever the law we have, that has been implemented. That's why it is not come under this form. So answer is 1 and 2 only, which means B, a C only. Next, how many are correct? C. So keen observation is more important. Next, question number 7. Which of the following pays is incorrectly, incorrect, that one is incorrectly matched. Uh, to examine the scheduled cast, answer is C. This answer is C, first of all. Providing OBC reservation by reducing SC and ST reservations by BP Mandal. Okay. This BP Mandal commission is regarding the OBC reservation, correct. But it is not to, by not by reducing the reservation to SC, STs. Providing 27% of reserves. Actually, this, this recommend this committee, BP Mandal committee recommended 27% of reservation for the 52%, 52% of the OBC population in the country. Why it has recommended only 27% for the 52% of the population? It is justified. How Indira Sahanai case, one case was there, na? according to which the Supreme Court imposed a ban, that is a 50% of reservation ban. 160%, 16% for SCs was in existence, 8% for STs. Remaining percent, 27% was has been provided by this BP mandate to OBC sold. But now EWS reservation, it breached this one. That's the different story. So BP mandal commission not to reduce the SCST in order to provide reservation for the OBCs. OBCs. Okay? That is wrong. Uh, for example, to examine the scheduled caste status once they converted into another religion. That is the K.G. Balakrishna. Recently, the government of India has appointed K.G. Balakrishna, former Chief Justice of India. So this, is, this has been in news recent years, recent months as well. Next one, OBC subcategorization, Justice Rohini, that is also correct. This OBC subcategorization, there are around 3,000 castes are there out of the OBCs. So now this Rohini's mandate, main mandate of this Justice Rohini committee is to subcategorization of the OBC. So that the government will classify OBC into OBC 1, OBC, A, B, C, D reservation like SC, A, B, like this, na? like this. So according to one surveys, various surveys, so out of 3,000 castes of OBCs, only few only 50 castes are garnering the every benefit from the OBC reservation. So remaining persons were uh, having been excluded. So if you if you have been uh, classified, it subcategorized, we can avoid such kind of exclusiveness out of the OBC. That's why GST is rolling. But this report has been, reporting time has been in extending and extending. Maybe release it just before elections. Next. Uh, next, fourth one, out of this one, D. To investigate the killings of innocent Sikhs during 1984 Sikh riots. Yes, that's correct. Justice Nanavati. 
Hmm. Okay, next one. Eighth. How many stages are there in legislation of ordinary bills into an act? How many stages are there? Hmm. So in the union judiciary is there in the parliament. There these are the very important judicial law making process. Ordinary bills are there, financial bills are there, money bills, ordinary money and financial bills are there according to Article 117. Ordinary bills according to hmm, 107 and 108. Ordinary bills 107, 108. 107 actually this ordinary bills in parliament means both houses separately. 108 is joint sitting. Joint sitting is always related to only ordinary bills, na? Uh, 108. That's why. 107, 108 related to ordinary bills. Next one, 110, 110 money bills. Finance bills, 1171, 1173. Next, constitutional amendment bills, 360. Article 368. These are the articles. There are five stages in the ordinary bills making process. There are five stages. A. But in some other books, it is around nine stages, ten stages. That's not wrong. That is not good. Five stages are there. Because they classified one stage, the second stage is there. Second stage is nothing but second reading stage. The second reading stage is sub. Uh, the, uh, there are three stages. Sub. There are three sub stages in the second reading stage. They are dividing as a separate stages by other books. That's not true. Next, ninth. Answer is A. Eighth bit answer is A. If it is a budget, that is a, there are six stages. Budget six stages. Uh, next uh, ninth. Constitution is a, this is a not more stages. Actually, the constitution first introduced in one house. Out of this one, around six stages are there. Constitution. Next ninth. Which of the following pages is incorrectly matched? Incorrect, underlined incorrect, first of all. So you should identify, like in mains questions, while reading these uh, questions, you should identify the keywords, question tags. What are the question tags here? Correct or incorrect, that is very important now. Incorrectly matched. Hmm. Number one, constitutional post and minimum age. President, minimum age is 35. Governor 35, Rajya Sabha MP 30 years, Prime Minister, Prime Minister 25 years. Prime Minister's qualification should contest in elections, which means he has to become first to MP. Na? Every MP can become the, every MP is eligible for the Prime Minister. That's why Prime Minister's eligibility is 25 years old, very less. Whereas Governor 30, President of India 30. Hmm. Next, answer is D. Tenth, which of the following statement is oblique or correct regarding EWS quota? Hmm. It is 101 Constitutional Amendment Act 2019. It is not 101, 103 Constitutional Amendment Act 2019. Next, provided by amending articles of 15 and 16. That is correct. Next, EWS quota is not for the SC, ST and OBCs. That is also true. EB, EWS quota for the other than SC, ST, OBC. Those who have reservations already, they are not eligible for the EWS. EWS for the oh, economically backward out of the non-reserved candidates. That is important. EWS quota. 10% EWS quota. Okay, answer is B. Next one. This 101 article Constitution Amendment Act is related to GST. GST of 2000? 2070. Hmm. Next one. Question number 11. Consider the following statements. Which of the above statement is oblique or correct? Hmm. Number one. On some occasions, High courts are more powerful than Supreme Court. Is it right? We should identify that. In some occasions, high courts are more powerful, powerful than the Supreme Court. 
yes, absolutely correct. In some occasions, especially in the context of the Article 32 and Article 26, Article 32 related to Supreme Court of India to, work, to protect the fundamental rights. And Article 226 also like this. But as far as these articles are concerned, the difference is concerned. This are, under the Article 226, the High Court can reject if anybody approaches the High Court. Supreme Court cannot reject. So, High Court is powerful. And in other context, according to the Article 226, the High Court can issue can investigate into not only constitutional writs, not only it can issue the writs, four or five writs, but it can also investigate into civil and criminal cases as per the Article 226 also. Whereas Article 32 is only related to constitutional writs only. You know, in this context also High Court is more powerful. Okay, in this context, especially related to Article 32, Article 226. Hmm. Next one. With all electoral college members who participated in electing the president are not part of his removal according to Article 61 of the Indian Constitution. There is an electoral college in order to elect the president of India in the, in, 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 at the national level, electoral college. This electoral college consists parliamentary members, means Lok Sabha members and Rajya Sabha members which include not nominated members. And another thing is all assembly members, all MLAs of the assemblies of the states, respective states, not the legislative council members in the states. And another thing is UTs. Those UTs having the assemblies, they are eligible. Their MLAs are eligible for the to become the electoral college. These are the members. However, during the impeachment process, for impeachment of the President of India, these all are not included. Only parliament. You know, only parliament na, not, need, need not participate by the, participated by the assemblies. So all members of the electoral college in order to elect the president, they are not the part of the removal process. So that's also correct. Na? Answer is C. Answer is C. Next one. Twelfth bit. Consider the following statements. What we have to do? Which of the above statement is oblique or correct? Hmm. Consider the following statement. No implementation of the 73rd, 74th Constitutional Amendment Acts fully is mainly because of the state government's reluctance to devolution of powers. True na ra? Wrong na? Hmm? Main reason is this reluctance of the state governments in India. That's the true. Next, UCC. Uniform civil courts cannot be implemented unless unanimity among all citizens, regions, communities, sections, religions, etc. Am I right? This is also correct. Why the uniform civil court has been left to the future generation by the grammars of the Indian uh, Constitution, Indian uh, founders of the Indian Constitution? Because yet the, in 1947, in view of this uh, division of the countries uh, during Pakistan-India division. There was no atmosphere to create this unanimity among the all regions and sections, religions of the country. That's why it was left to the future generation by the framers of the constitution. So unanimity is more important. This UCC is more important for the previous point of view because certain states, already we have that bit also. Certain states have been appointed committees in order to implement a uniform civil code in their respective state. That is absolutely wrong as per the constitution of India. Of course, in order to get certain benefits, some vested interest to fulfill certain vested interest, they have been appointed. But however, they cannot, their acts cannot stand before the Supreme Court of India because UCC is not related to any part, not related to any sections. It is related to whole country, which include everything, all sections, all castes, okay, all gender, all reasons, everything. It is for the whole country, Article 40, not for the single uniform civil code. It is more important. This year, definite bit this one. Next. Uh, which of the following statements? So, answer is C. For the answer, 11th, answer is C. Next, 13th. Which of the following statements related to Kerala are supporting its good governance? Supporting its good governance. Kerala is known for the good governance in the country. There is no other state 
which can stand before the Kerala as far as the good governance is concerned. Kerala is the minority, or what is the coalition government. And Kerala was the first state in, in the world which, select, which elected the communist government through, ba through ballot. The first elected communist government came into force in Kerala in the world itself in 1957, Namudri Prasad government. That was the credit of the Kerala. It, it is the beautiful state as far as the, this good governance in India. So it is a very important pioneering state for the all states. In India, Kerala story is the greatest story. Okay? Uh, look, look at this one. What are these substantiate or supporting or corroborating the, the good governance process in Kerala? Uh, top HDA index. Good na? Why it is HDA index is the topmost in India? Almost equivalent with the South Korea, this China. Because good governance is there. Good governance means the implementation of framing as well as implementation of law. They framed the social, beautiful social laws, social investment. They have mega income. However, they invested in society, social. Socially, they invested. That's why it got the lot of good results. Women nurses, women doctors across the nation. And as far as the next one, highest literacy. That's the beautiful. Next, highest sex ratio. That is also. Next, international tourism. In recently, just a few days back, okay, you know, New York based paper has identified the 50 top most de tourist de destinations in order to recommend for the old tourists. Out of it, Kerala was one amongst them. Earlier also, the, some British tourist council has also recommended the Kerala. This is one of the hot spot of this tourism in India. Why tourism? There is a good land order is there. Okay, they are protecting the environment, they are providing every facilities to this one, tourist. That's why it is a good governance. That is common as good governance. Next one, it's highest remittances. So this year India record. So though even, uh, though various headwinds also there like COVID and Russia-Ukraine war, India received 100 billion dollars remittances from foreign countries. Out of it, 19 billion dollars, around one-fifth received by only Kerala state. And most of these people are went to this Middle East, not to high-income countries like software fields like USA, Canada, European countries. They mostly migrating to the Middle East, mostly unskilled and semi-skilled people. That is indicating good vac vocational education, good security. Everything is in Kerala. That is also indicating the good governance process. Next, highest population development. What do you mean by development? Po not population growth, population development. So, IMR, infant mortality rate is less. That is a good development. Less population growth. So, it's good gender and high life expectancy. Okay, these are all related to population development. So this is also very good at good in Kerala. That's what the five, uh, this all six, six things indicating that there is a good governance process, strong, profound good governance process in Kerala compared to any state in India. That's why answer is D. See, this is what the analytical type of the bit. So it almost covers the, not only quality, even all other areas as well. So remember, this is the, highest range of it. Unless you cover the almost other areas, you can't answer it. Okay, answer is D. Next, 14. The territory of India includes, what is the answer? Answer is B not D not. Answer is B. According to the Indian Constitution, Article 1, Article 1, 2, 3, these are all related to Indian territory, the first article itself. Okay, territories of the states. Next, territories of the UTs of the first schedule. Next, other territories as may be acquired. These three. So, remember, Park Occupied Cosmere and Arcesina are also part of the government, Indian. But no need to mention here, because territories of the states means which include territories of the UTs, for example, part POK. Now, POK come under the most Jammu and Kashmir state. 
and also Ladakh area. These two UTs are also there. Now UTs is part of Indian Crown, Indian territory, which include POK as well. So no need to mention again. Next one. For example, Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Akchaichin, this is the part of Ladakh. So this uh, the second one. Territories of the UTs of the first schedule, which include Ladakh. This Akchaichin included in the Ladakh. So why should you mention again? No need to mention. Answer is B. Next. Fifteenth. With the reference to the office of the Vice President of India, consider the following statements. Consider the following statements. Now, which of the above statement is or correct? We should identify the correct ones. The first statement. Look at the first statement. He can hold office beyond five years term until his successor takes charge. Yes, according to Article 67, it's correct. Though his term completed, he has to wait. He has to stay in the post until successor came in. Next, no role of no role for the state assemblies in his election compared to the uh, no role. For, no role for state assemblies in his election. Yes, that's correct. According to Article 66, the uh, Vice President has been elected by the only Parliament members only, Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha members only. Next, because why this, this is the main question actually, why this, for example, President of India Electoral College consists so many members, even assemblies, legislative councils and UTE assemblies, etc, etc. But what about the VC, Vice President? Why he is the elector? Those who are selecting, electing him is only confined to Parliament. Why? This is the main question as well. Why? Because his role is very narrow. His main role is as a chairman of the Rajya Sabha and if he, in order to meet the emergency post of the President. If the President has been dead, died or vacant on whatever the grounds, he will just fill the only for the political continuum only. So more than that one, there were no particular duties for the Vice President. That's why he is narrow, electorate. Next third, compared to the governor of a state, he has less powers except presidents. Hmm. Is it true or wrong? Compared to the governor of a state, he has less powers except presidents. What about it? Yes, compared to governor, he has less powers. What is the... Before governor, he is a zero. Governor is just like the president of India. There are, they have huge functions. Okay? There are, there are huge functions under the article 67 itself. Oh, sorry, not 67. 202 etc etc what governor has to do like a president like a president he has to do duties at this this uh, state level but uh, uh, vice president less powers just vice chairman of the Rajya Sabha and to fill the gap of the president if, if it fell vacant so whereas governor huge burden hmm. that's also true next a formal impeachment is not required for his removal. Yes. For, for Vice President removal, there is no need of any formal impeachment process. Actually, even Constitution also doesn't mention it. According to Article 67, okay, if uh, this parliament in order to remove the Vice President, this Rajya Sabha, this bill should be introduced in Rajya Sabha with 14 days notice, number one. And this bill, this, uh, this uh, resolution should be passed by effective majority. What do you mean by effective majority? Effective majority is nothing but more than 15% of the members present and voting. That is known as effective or special majority, simple. There are so many kinds of special majority. But as far as the removal of the Vice President is concerned, according to Article 67, uh, what do we need? Just more than 50% of MPs present and voting should be supported this resolution. So next this bill will be will go to Lok Sabha, where simple majority is enough. 
So great role for the Rajya Sabha to remove the vice president. So there is no formal impeachment process like uh, like in the case of president. President of India is more complicated. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, what is the answer now? D. See how many kinds of issues have been uh, selected by this one. This is according to Article 64, he has acted as a ex officio chairman of Rajya Sabha also. Uh, next one. Sixteenth. Which of the following is wrongly matched regarding the constitutional committees? Answer is C. States committee. States committee headed by Nehru. Even Union Powers Committee, Nehru, Union Constitution Committee, Nehru, Provincial Constitution, Sardar Pashtun. Even States Constitution also, Nehru. Oh, next one. 17 D. 17 answer is D, which means none of the above. Why none of the above? Which of the above statement is or not correct? Not correct. But the statements are correct. Both are correct. But he asked not correct, which means none of the above. Mm, statement, look at the statement. The parliament can empower any court other than the Supreme Court and High Courts to exercise the writ jurisdiction. Yes. The, if uh, parliament wants, it can confer on the, this writ jurisdiction power on any court of India. Or it can create the courts also. It is not the violation of the constitution. In order to expand the judicial uh, outreach. According to Article 32.3, that one. According to Article 32.3, Supreme Court can confer on this writ jurisdiction power on any court of India. On any court of India. Even it can create courts also. Next, the Prime Minister of India gets a salary and allowances that are equal to an MP. Yes, that's true. Because he was elected as an MP. He has been in countering in this MP post. But the extra he will get because of this, uh, by virtue of his position, not by virtue of his constitutional status. Next, uh, the D answer. 18th. Which of the following features he is obligated or responsible for the describing India as a republic? What are the features? Hmm. Parliamentary form of the government. Already we have British also. British is not a republic. Because they have queen. Republic is nothing but elected president. That's also. Elected president is there in India. It is not dynasty in nature. Whereas in Britain, queen is there. Thailand, queen is there. King is there. Japan, king is there. Spain, king is there. Netherlands, king is there. Dutch, recently visited. Even Canada, New Zealand, they have British queen. They are not republic the countries. But whereas in India, it's a republic. Republic means elected president. Hmm. That was the two. Answer is D. Two whole name. Next, 19th. Uh, this is the match the following questions here. While uh, answering these questions, first try to identify two. If two are correct, automatically you can, that will be the correct. Uh, article 110. This is the money bill. 231, committee, common high courts, 108, joint city. Earlier also I told you. 369, the temporary power to parliament to make laws on certain issues of state list. Article 369. Next, answer C. Uh, next, 20. 20. Which of the following is the oldest parliamentary committee in the India? Public Accounts Committee is the oldest committee, which is the largest committee as well as most important parliamentary committee as well. This was started in India in 1921 as per the Government of India Act 1919. 1998, 1919 Government of India Act has muted this one, recommended this one. Started in 1921, Public Accounts Committee. Next, Estimates Committee also 19, Committee started in 1950 in India. Next, Public Undertakings Committee 1964. Come down agriculture, this is a temporary committee, temporary in nature. Next, 21, consider the following statement, which of the above statement is obligatory, incorrect. Uh, pertaining to the removal of the Vice President of India, the Council of State has more power, powerful than the House of the People. That's true, na? according to Article 67, Rajya Sabha 
has to pass this resolution by two third with the 50% defect to measure out of the present and voting present and voting members next creation of the post of vice president is mainly for the continuity of the governments just the continuity of the government that's all that was the article 64 is the ex officio of the rajya sabha next political continuity uh, next one 22 22 answer is so in the above 21 21 bill he asked the incorrect which means about two statements are correct the answer is none of the above next 22 which of the following pair is correctly matched which of the following pairs is correctly matched pairs uh, bill related to number of judges in the supreme court hmm. that's correct simple majority next bills related to jurisdiction of the supreme court that is also simple majority not special majority next cancellation of the state legislative assemblies legislative councils creation of the cancellation of the legislative councils not legislative assembly legislative council right just rectify no need of special majority simple majority one next changes in citizenship article 5 6 7 8 this is also related needs only simple method so you should read it for which things for which it needs the special special majority simple majority or else special majority plus of of the state there are three kinds na hmm. next 23rd the federal equilibrium is perfectly being protected by which of the following indian federal system Council of States, President of India, All India Services, Finance Commission. Which one? It is more difficult to put, but it appears to be very small. Oh, what is the correct? Council of State, Rajya Sabha. Under Article 80, there is a creation of Rajya Sabha. Is there? This main pro main function is to protect the this federal equilibrium. To protect, or simply to protect the interest of the states. That was the main function, of, that is the main function of the Rajya Sabha in India. Next, 24. Area wise, which of the following is the smallest Lok Sabha conscience in India? Chandni Chow, area wise. Area wise, the largest conscience, parliamentary, Ladakh. Area wise, large, Ladakh. Population wise large, this is Hyderabad, Malkangiri. Small, area wise small. Hmm. Not in terms of population wise, na. it is in, I think it is in uh, Lakshadri. Lakshadri. Area wise small, Lakshadri. Uh, population wise small, Lakshadri. Population wise large. Malkanagir. Area wise large, Ladakh. Area wise small, Chandni Chowk of Delhi. Next. 25. Which of the following is wrongly matched? Hmm. Institution of Speaker, British Constitution. That's correct. Planning Commission on Five Year Plans, Soviet Council. That is also correct. Idea of Residuary Powers, Irish Con. Wrong. This is from the Canadian Constitution. C. Ron. Next, nomination of the members to Rajya Sabha. Irish Constitution. Election of President is also Irish Constitution. Here, answer is C. Next, 26. Consider the following statements regarding the comparison of Indian and US Vice President. Position. Indian Vice President. Why Indian Vice President do you should compare? Because Indian, go Indian Constitutional makers has adopted this Vice President post from the US. That is also source of the American Constitution. Uh, in comparison, both preside over their respective upper houses and cast their vote in the case of deadlock. Yes, that is similar in nature. Next, when the US President post falls vacant, the US Vice President holds it until the remaining period. Whereas in India, it is temporary until fresh elections are conducted to the post of president. What is this? Yes, it's true. 
No, Kamala Harris is, is waiting. If the widow 79 years old around, if he dead now, she will become president and she will continue the remaining period of the widow. No fresh elections in years. Whereas in India, if the president of India died or resigned or vacated or for whatever the reasons or impeached, impeachment has happened, he removed, he was removed now. This vice president will come to temporarily. Next elections will be happen and next new president will come. Whereas in years, this vice president will come to this post and will continue the remaining period of the president. That was the difference. Hmm. Next one. So both are correct. C. Next 27. The annual financial, this is very, very important bit. This is the governing process, governance bit. Vice president, comparison of years and this. Uh, 27th bit. The annual financial statements of the state is described by which of the following article? 202. 202 is the state's budget. 112 is the central budget. Next, 204 is the state's appropriate bill. 206 is the state's vote on account. 204 states appropriate bill. 206 is states vote on account. Next, 28. Consider the following statements. The chief secretary powers are wider than the cabinet secretary. So, which, which of the following statements are correct? No. The chief secretary's powers are more wider than the cabinet secretary. Is it true or, or, not, or not correct? Is it true, no? Hmm. Yes, chief secretary's powers are more wider than the cabinet secretary. True. Next, the ordinance making power of the president simply made him on par with the parliament. It also provides him or her with all force, effect and also restrictions related to the parliamentary laws. It is also true. So, according to article 1, 2, 3, president can issue the ordinances when the parliament was not in session or any house of the parliament is, was not in session. If there is any existing, existing, exigency or emergency conditions are there, if he is satisfied based on the recommendation of the council of ministers, he can issue the ordinance under the article 123. If it is the state, article number 213, only 10 difference is there. Okay? Hmm. So both are correct. That's why answer is D, none. None of the above. 29. Which of the following statement is an incorrect regarding nota? Nota means none of the above. It is introduced at the bid of the Supreme Court's direction. Yes, Supreme Court of India asked the election commission to put into to insert this in EVMs. Next, when the nota votes are higher than any candidate who are in fray, re-elections will be held. No re-elections. It is only for the sake of to fulfill the Article 21, Article 19. According to Article 19, this nota was inserted based on the recommendation of the Supreme Court of India, Article 19. Under Article 19, various, various liberties are there. Out of this one liberty is the freedom of expression is there. Na? So freedom of expression for the voters. So if no candidate, they, want, they don't want any candidate, na, they need another expression. So that's what nota. None of the other. I don't like anyone. He can express. That's, that indicates the freedom of expression under Article 19. Okay? Next. This kind of bits are mostly available in EM box. Not in this uh, Lakshmi Kanpo. But it is a governance part is also there, na? that is more. Important. So why this is bit come under the governance? Because this is the not a implementation of the election electoral articles. So this is the part of the governance. Governance is what is the difference between governance and quality? There is no short difference. Why? This constitution impl implementation mechanism is nothing but governance. That's all. Uh, next. Out of this nota, it is a part of the freedom of expression of an individual. It is started in India in 9, 2013. Everything correct except B. 13. Under whose, under whose prime ministership the constitutional amendment bill to con constitutionalize the panchayats was first introduced? Answer B. Rajiv Gandhi introduced it in 1998. 
this panchayati raj act actually this uh, constitution amendment act was introduced by introduced was by rajiv gandhi 1989 and uh, this uh, anti defection law he was introduced introduced by rajiv rajiv is not a simple prime minister though he was the youngest and he doesn't have he didn't he didn't have any experience also before prime minister he never even a single day he didn't work as a mp even he didn't work as a sarpanch finally he became a pre, pre, prime minister youngest prime minister but however he introduced the acts the historical acts like anti defection law 7774 and he say you will get 61 constitution amendment act he reduced the voting age from 21 to 18 that was also historic in the world and computers he initiated the economic reforms before manmohan and uh, rao he was the greatest regarding these things next pv narsara finally passed in 1990 okay uh, 31 which of the following statements is obligatory describing the 10th schedule in our constitution what is the importance of the describe how it is describing the india to establish political stability this 10th schedule is nothing but anti defection law anti defection law in order to prevent the defections why it, it why it wants to be uh, this uh, inserted in the constitution what is the main purpose of the 10th schedule which means anti defection law to establish the political stability that's correct to strengthen the democratic process yes Next, to increase the efficiency of the legislature. Yes, if there is any defections are there, na, no value for the this loss made by the legislature and no trust among the public. Next, that's why increase the efficiency of legislative process of the house. That is also correct. Next, recognition recognition to the political parties in their constitution. Yes, this article this 52 constitutional amendment act. Actually, in fact, has given recognition to political parties in Indian Constitution. In original Indian Constitution, no mention of the political parties, no word mentioned in the political parties. But it, while inserting this article, one or two, etc., related to anti-defection law, this term was included in the Indian Constitution related to BIPO. Okay, the body, what do you mean by anti-defection? If any political party. Elected member, he jump put to another party. He is he is deserves to be disqualified. During this occasion, it inserted the political party. Either to it was not there in the Indian Constitution originally. So that is also great significance, na. Next to to reduce the criminalization of politics, that is also. So answer is D. All are correct. Next. 32 which of the following statements is obligatory incorrect regarding the gst in india incorrect regarding gst it is a part of the third economic reforms yes and it is a part of ease of doing business that is also correct okay if there is any gst uniform tax is there okay investors will come if it is a tax process is rational investors will come That's why this is the part of the third generation reforms. Even ease of doing business is also why this ranking to attract the investments. That is the main recommend main tax. This uh, indirect tax reform is the main important part of this ease of doing business. Next biggest indirect tax reform since independence. That's true. Next it embodies the notion of one nation one tax. So after Modi came to power, these are common one nation one nation. One election, one nation, one ration card, one nation. Ah, uh, what is the other things? There are so many things like this. One nation, one law, uniform civil code. Next, one constituency, one member, one constituency. Okay, these are common now nowadays. But certain occasions is okay. It embodies the notion one nation, one tax. Next. it signifies the cooperative federalism in india yes this is also true in order to bring to broad this gst law in india the states and central were he mutually adjusted mutually sacrificed and they brought the this great law in india that's why this indicates the 
cooperative federalism in India. Next. And also half of the states has passed this part. Next, GST is not the promoting the local government. That is also correct. Because the, in GST, there is no mention of the funds to these local bodies. So it is reducing space for the local bodies. And also, the GST is ensuring tax returns to state governments from the center certain times. Even compensation also. But now states are happy with this tax. So they are not worrying about the octra and other local taxes by the local self-governments. So reducing the financial space for the local governments by GST. It needs reforms. Next. All are correct. All are correct means none of the above. Hmm. Next one. 33. Which of the following is the philosophical principle behind the policy of affirmative action or reservation in India? What is the correct? Equity, equality, equity, integrity, liberty. Answer is equity. <coughs> Not equality. Equity. So now the question is what is the difference between the equality and 